Yep. So just to give a bit of context, so Nature Canada is facilitating uh, regional reforestation coalitions. Um, and, you know, a lot of the members in the coalitions expressed interest in, you know, connecting with organizations across the country and uh, learning from each other. So we're facilitating this national coalition meeting space as an opportunity for organizations to share knowledge and co-learn. Uh, the focus of today's meeting will be on the Two Billion Tree Program. Um, and our next meeting on July 5th will focus on different themes. And uh, we're eager to hear from you all as to like, you know, suggestions as to what kind of themes and meeting topics that you'd like to um, focus on. So for our agenda today, we're just gonna share a quick Two Billion Tree Program update and um, what kind of support Nature Canada can provide. Um, following that, we'll have Randall present about the Tree Canada Program. David will share insights from the CESC report and uh, afterwards we'll have our guest speaker presentations followed by a Q&A period. So just to share a quick Two Billion Tree Program update. Um, so the NRCAN is still following the ongoing uh, proposal submission system. So there are upcoming proposal submission deadlines in June, August, and October for the tree planting streams. And you'll receive a decision uh, six months after uh, the submission deadline. The capacity building stream is expected to open later in the year. And uh, we just wanna like, you know, reaffirm that uh, Nature Canada is here to support you guys throughout the proposal process, whether it be by distribu distributing um, program information and updates or supporting you in advocacy efforts um, by arranging meetings with decision makers and or presenting about the program to them. And also, you know, attending any stakeholder brainstorming meetings to uh, provide feedback on uh, the proposals. So feel free to reach out to us, um, you know, if you have any questions or if you're planning on submitting a proposal, uh, we're here to help. And without further ado, I'll pass it on to Randall Van Wagner, who's the head of the National Greening Program at Tree Canada. Thank you, Rakshan. Great to be here and thanks to Nature Canada for hosting this event. Well, you got my presentation there for me. Thank you. That's great. Uh, yeah, a little bit about myself. I grew up in southwestern Ontario. I worked for about 15 years at the Lower Thames Conservation Authority. I managed the property there that we owned, about 2,000 hectares. And then I also was in charge of our habitat restoration program. And so now I'm with Tree Canada. And yeah, I'm the head of our national greening. If you want to hit the next slide, that would be good. Our national greening program is rural planting, so seedlings. Uh, Tree Canada has been around since 1992. And since then, we've planted about 84 million trees. We have a fairly robust urban program as well, which focuses on schoolyards and community groups. Uh, next slide, please. And so, yeah, here's our four main areas of focus. Uh, for my program, National Greening, it's the reforestation and carbon offsetting. We also have engagement and research. And so we collaborate with different uh, universities and academia in our operation relief uh, that helps support communities that uh, have received a natural disaster. So last year, the Hurricane Fiona out on the East Coast, we're gonna be planting a significant amount of trees back in that community. Uh, next slide, please. And so, yeah, today I'm just going to keep it brief. Uh, we have a 10-year agreement with NRCAN to implement the Two Billion Tree Program. And so this has goals every year. Incrementally, they increase, and we are set to plant 22 million trees. And so obviously with that program, we have to have a 50% match and that's one nice thing about Tree Canada. We have a full development team that goes out and finds sponsors and donors to provide that match. So that's one thing I don't have to do. Really, all I have to do is find the projects and the partners and the funding is there. And so that's something we can offer Nature Canada as well. Uh, you might have a project in mind, but you you don't know how to fund the project. Well, that's why I'm here. So. Uh, this year, we have plans to plant 1.8 million trees across the country. And here I just put a little description on how we can assist. So we have staff that are dedicated to project development. We can handle the application process and assist you with that. 
We have many contractors and consultants that we can reach out to to help plant the projects. Uh, we have access to different nurseries and obviously with the two billion tree program there's a fair bit of reporting so that's something else that we can handle as well and i already mentioned the match so yeah next slide uh what's coming down the pipe uh we just shot a video out in bc last week at williams lake first nation uh, we did a pretty big planting there close to a million trees last year and so that's going to be one of three videos that we're shooting over the next few months. Uh, one's going to be in Saskatchewan and then a couple up in Gatineau. And so these will be helpful for people to get an understanding of tree planting and what's involved. Uh, this last winter, I just negotiated an agreement with AWES. We're going to work with them to plant trees in Alberta and Saskatchewan. So that's very positive. We're working on something similar with Conservation Ontario. And we also have a big planting coming up in BC starting this year that's close to 1 million trees on one site. So I'm excited for these big projects, but I certainly will entertain the smaller ones that are you know, several thousand as well. Really, it's anything over three hectares in size. Next slide. So yeah, there's many ways to keep in touch with Tree Canada. You can sign up for our newsletter. Uh, obviously, we're on all the different social media platforms. And next slide. If you have any questions, uh, you have a project in mind, or you're looking for more guidance, by all means, reach out to me directly. There's my email. So thank you. I kept it short and sweet. And if there's any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Randall. Yep. So yeah, if anyone has any questions, we'll have a Q&A period after near the end of our meeting. So, and uh, yeah, we'll also be including Randall and all the guest speakers uh, contact info in our follow-up email. So you can feel free to ask them any questions. Yeah. So now I'll be passing it on to David, um, who'll be sharing some of the insights about the two million tree program from the CSD report. Hi folks. So uh, as you may know, uh, we, Recently, in the last uh, couple of weeks, the Commissioner of the Environment and Sustainable Development uh, released an audit of the Two Billion Trees program. And uh, in that, they were assessing how the federal government has uh, implemented the program so far and uh, challenges and potential um, opportunities for improvement that the, that the government might have. So sort of the, the big overarching uh, message of this was that you know, currently the, the federal government is not on track to plant their uh, the 2 billion trees by 2031. Um, they have, while they, you know, in the first year in 2021, they came pretty close to meeting their target of 30 million trees. Uh, in the second year, their tar they fell far short of the 60 million target, hitting only about 16 uh, million, 16 and a half million out of the, out of the 60 million. And this is sort of highlighting some of the, the challenges that, you know, um, those who are looking to do planting have had in actually accessing the funding. Um, you know, the, the commissioner noted that, you know, the federal government has so far not uh, established long-term partnerships with, with uh, planting organizations or provinces and territories, or have been uh, extremely slow in doing so. And they haven't uh, been good at ramping up the capacity um, throughout you know throughout the country in terms of actually planting so um, this is sort of highlighting some of the issues that many of your organizations have been have been talking about already um, and uh, you know showing that you know there there, there, there are changes that are going to be made uh, need to be made and advocacy that needs to be done uh, to improve the, the the implementation of this program um, additionally it you know it also called into question some of the um, original original uh, proposed benefits of the program, um, like the carbon sequestration numbers. You know, the the government was originally saying this would sequester between eleven to twelve uh, megatons of uh, carbon by twenty fifty. Um, in actuality, it looks like it's going to be about uh, uh, about four point three megatons uh, by twenty fifty. Um, so, you know, there's there's going to have to be a little bit of a refocus and one of the big problems is that currently the federal government is not requiring um, permanent uh, permanent protection of trees planted under the pro uh, under the program 
further calling into question the the you know long term um, uh, carbon sequestration potential of the program, and uh, they are not requiring uh, you know certain amounts of bio, uh, minimum biodiversity requirements. Um, so you know we're not we're not going to see the, the 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 core benefits that we might like to see for species at risk for the overall health and biodiversity of our forests. Um, so um, this is sort of showing that you know there's going to need to be a bit of a realignment and a readjustment on the part of uh, of Natural Resources Canada uh, as they continue to 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 implement this program. And this is sort of part of the opportunity. Um, for an organization like Nature Canada that is advocating on um, on this program um, to to make some of these these changes to to bring the the concerns of organizations like all of yourselves um, forward and present ways in which this program could be more um, more effective and more accessible and actually hit some of those targets that we want to see. So um, I'll sort of leave it at that, and uh, you know I'm. I, uh, and I'll, I'll finish with, um, please, you know, reach out, to, uh, reach out to us with always with your your suggestions on, you know, the the solutions that you would like to see to the program, how it would make it more accessible for you, um, because you know we are we are building advocacy campaigns around this program, and we want to, you know, we want to hear the voices of those who are planting. We want to hear, um, you know, how this program can be better implemented and how we can make it better. So. Thanks. Great. Thanks, David. Yeah. And also just to add on. So one part of our advocacy campaign is uh, a sign-on letter that we're um, penning to NRCAN. So the sign-on letter consists, you know, of concerns and critiques that we've heard from all of you about the two billion tree program. And uh, yeah, so we're currently uh, in the drafting process and we're hoping to release it uh, um, either next week or the following one to collect signatures from all of you. And um, hopefully that can lead to some changes um, in, the in the implementation of the program. Yeah, so thanks, David. And uh, I'll pass it on to Erna from Trees Please Winnipeg Coalition. And she'll be speaking about her advocacy efforts in the city of Winnipeg. Uh, Erna, are you there? I think you might be muted. Sorry, I'm talking without my mic being no. on. <laughs> okay, let me start again. So Trees Please Coalition Winnipeg is not a tree planting group. So we haven't applied to 2 billion trees for money. That said, we uh, have been lobbying all three levels of government hard to get more money for urban forestry. And that includes getting them to apply for the 2 billion tree program. So a little bit about trees, please. Trees, please coalesced out of uh, uh, resident and neighborhood associations that had formed over concerns about escalating boulevard tree loss and how slow replacement was. We were losing a ton of trees. Uh, a number of those groups took advantage of the city's land development reserve fund, which individual councillors could access and provide essentially grant money to residents to replant their boulevard trees. So essentially to do the job that urban forestry in Winnipeg should be doing. So we met over a number of weeks with people and months and over the last three years with urban forestry. And what we came to realize was that their budget was simply wasn't sustainable. It was staggeringly low, in fact. And with Dutch Elm well-established and EAB on the horizon uh, and a dismal pruning cycle, we were looking at between a 30 to 50% canopy loss over the next decade or two, which was very alarming. Add to that the fact that by 2021, we had a a 80% backlog in tree replacement, in public tree replacement, and we were not to put too fine a point on it, screwed. So our primary focus was to get a handle on what UFD needed, uh, that's urban forestry, and get them more funding. So during that process, we developed a fantastic relationship and a, and a give and take relationship with our chief forester, who's now one of our strongest allies. So 
based on the information we got for her, we formulated a lobbying strategy that we aimed at all three levels of government. The first level of government was, was the feds. Um, and what we were trying to say to them was, you have to view urban forests as natural infrastructure and fund them the way you would fund any essential urban infrastructure. And we've had a bit of movement. I think there's still some councillors who don't quite get it. But, uh, you know, after 10 years of saying the same thing, some are starting to get the message. Uh, so the lobbying strategy with the feds was uh, in 2021, and it was to, uh, we strat also strategized on that, on that campaign with three MLAs, local ML, uh, MPs rather, two liberal and one NDP. And with their help and numerous other groups across the country, we lobbied the finance and infrastructure ministers prior to the 2021 budget. They listed, they listened and uh, they acted on two fronts. First, by establishing the natural infrastructure fund. And secondly, by including urban trees in uh, the 2 billion tree program. Now there were lots of organizations asking for that. We were one of many voices. So once the Natural Infrastructure Fund and Two Billion Trees were announced, um, we, within a month or two, once it once the criteria became clear, um, we held a meeting with Winnipeg's chief forester, the province's urban forestry person, and urban foresters from across the province uh, that make up the Manitoba Urban Forest Council. And Trees Canada, and we accessed the expertise of Trees Canada in that meeting. They came in and sort of walked all the foresters through how to apply for two billion trees money. Once we had the foresters on side, specifically our urban forester here in Winnipeg, uh, and she was ready to apply at the next city budget, we then not only asked for an increase, as we always do, we in the in the forestry budget, we also encourage transparency. We basically, you need to support the application that urban forestry sent in. You need to make public whether they're uh, successful, and um, and you also need to at least try to match the funds that. Uh, um, that are going to be coming into the capital budget uh, from two billion trees. So um, fortunately for us, the city was successful in its application, as was the province. They both applied and they both got money, which meant more money for planting. Um, part of the city's two billion tree money has also been earmarked to fund something called the Homegrown Program. These are grants to neighborhoods that can access um, funds to plant trees on public land like parks. So uh, that, that's also a big plus and will help them get to the 30,000 trees they need to plant over the next three years. Um, our chief forester also applied to the Natural Infrastructure Fund to finance tree replacement tree replacements on one of our main downtown streets. And I think this is gonna become uh, more and more of an issue. Uh, using silver cells, which allow trees to grow in areas that are high density concrete and asphalt, and also serve as effective stormwater capture devices for watering those trees. So we're getting there, but we're not quite there yet. The city hasn't formally placed public trees in public, well, they have placed it in public works, but it's still under social services. So they're still looking at it as a, you know, an add-on, but they're starting to get the message that this forest, this urban forest needs to be protected. It needs to be replanted and it needs to be expanded. Because in the last civic election, we did a, a campaign called the Trees Please Pledge. We got every candidate in the city, in the city to sign it, except for a couple. And it committed council to planting two to one, um, enacting stronger bylaws for tree protection and a seven year pruning cycle. There's also changes happening in the bureaucracy. We're hearing from the chief forester that the city engineers and planners are starting to come to her to talk about how they protect trees or 
how they incorporate trees in road renewal projects, that kind of thing, which is positive, which was not happening before. Uh, and the city's also exploring signing the Montreal Biodiversity Pledge, which will go a long way to uh, protect the few intact forests that remain in our city boundaries and increase um, our city's dismal Stats Canada greenness score. So that's a little bit about Trees Please and what we did to lobby the city foresters uh, and provincial foresters to apply for 2 billion tree funds. Great. Thank you for Any sharing. Questions? <laughs> yeah, um, I, I think just to keep it smooth flowing, we're going to okay. keep all the questions together at the end sure. of the period. I hope yeah. that was two or three minutes. Yeah. Thank you, Erna. Um, yeah, so next I'll pass it on to Peter, uh, who's with the Prince Albert Model Force Association. Great. Thank you, Rakshan. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm calling in from Shellbrook, Saskatchewan, which is about 20 minutes away from Prince Albert. It's Treaty 6 territory, homeland of the Métis in the Dakota. And yeah, I'll talk briefly about some of our work that we've done, especially leading up to our 2 billion trees program. So you can go to the next slide for me. Um, so Prince Albert, if you were to throw a dart at Saskatchewan, it's in the very middle of the province. Um, it's right along the North Saskatchewan River and basically about another 20 minutes away from the uh, confluence of the North and South Saskatchewan Rivers. Uh, for our 2 billion trees project, we got the capacity building stream. Um, and this was built off of uh, the Healthy Communities Initiative that we did a few years ago. Um, there were some planting sites in Prince Albert that had been done as part of the Canada's centennial, or not centennial, um, for 150 years. But uh, a lot of them were damaged from snow clearing. They, they planned with community in mind. And so a lot of our work here was to try to regenerate these areas and kind of rebuild uh, youth planting and a forest education from the ground up in this part of the province. Go ahead. So one big aspect of work in Prince Albert here is, is youth engagement. We have a predominantly indigenous population of a city about 35 to 40,000 people. And there's a 20 to 25% child poverty rate. So especially with indigenous children, um, they not don't have many opportunities and they don't, they might fall into um, you know, uh, poor conditions and not great lifestyles. So one of the aspects of this was trying to specifically engage indigenous kids in the community and try to engage how do you do on the land learning and building community um, in a more urban-ish environment. And so the idea of the time program is not only to plant trees, but also to build forestry capacity, uh, specifically in the tree planting area, uh, build um, kind of a sense of value and purpose in the community for kids who do plant the trees and to kind of do a de demonstrative aspect of how we can revise forestry education in Saskatchewan with more indigenous components. And this is a cool picture here of in two years ago, actually almost to the date, there was a fire just north of town. Uh, and at the same time, there were Northern Lights that evening right by the river. So it makes for a pretty spectacular picture. So we'll go ahead. The first year we had 400 trees that were planted. Um, and we had a summer student that was to help out with do that. We had some donations from regional industry partners and looking at planting both trees and shrubs along. This is called the Rotary Trail. It's a, a, a pathway that essentially encircles the entire city for public biking, walking, et cetera. And it's a really great asset to our city. Um, the problem is a lot is uh, in other parts of it are in fact slumping into the river. And so part of our work here was to both access fruit trees and shrubs in the area for passerbys to have more kind of urban food security to some extent, and then to also prevent slumping into the river, at least in some particular locations. And the last thing was development of a tree planting handbook, um, just as a, a demonstrative and interactive tool. Go ahead. So as I was saying about the fire, 2021 was very dry and there was a lot of death of those 400 trees. Uh, unfortunately, the city didn't have the capacity to water them during the drought season. Prince Albert's about 42 years behind in its tree pruning as a municipality. And so it's very hard to keep up with even new plants. Um, and of course, this was also still during uh, the midst of COVID. So it's very difficult to recruit volunteers. Um, and one of our nice apple trees, unfortunately, the fence I built around it got blown down in one of our crazy plow winds. And so we'll have to place that tree. And this is just a picture of the water bombers literally flying on the other side of the river by the airport, putting out the fire. Go ahead. Regardless, uh, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. So in 2022, this last summer, we planted over 2000 trees, um, not all just in Prince Albert. Um, these are just a sample of some of the planting sites. 
So the original 2021 site was along the river here on the teal. And then we added both, we replanted some of that, but also added two more sections. And that's to help prevent the river slumping. Um, where you can see the pathway going right by the river, it, it uh, has been replaced because a lot of it actually has already slumped. Um, so there was about 1,200 planted in Prince Albert with kids, and then the other remaining ones were planted in regional First Nations communities, and as well as the town of Shelbrooke here. Oh, you can go ahead. There we go. So yeah, another thing we've brought in is just increasing partnerships. Oops, sorry, it's too far. Uh, is it this slide or? Nope, the one previous, yeah. Um, one thing we did is we found a contractor from a local business called the Backyard Garden, and she was great in having her team do a lot more of the site prep for us. So we could actually plant in the ideal uh, windows of May and September. Um, and then we expanded, of course, to plant in Shelbrook and Mr. Wasis. So the tree you see here is actually in the town of Shelbrook, where I am right now. And that was high school kids planting a shelter belt in the region. So I think it's important for us too. We're a municipality, but we are surrounded by a lot of rural communities. And I think in terms of forest education and looking at our kind of boreal forest transition area as a, as a corridor or network, it's important to include these smaller centers um, and use those experiences to inform our work on the handbook. And lastly, we've also done a boreal biologue event, which is taking youth uh, and also the public to the nearby burn area that just happened, and then the also mature boreal forest, and looking at both different species composition and forest succession as part of kind of a citizen citizen science engagement session. So when people are out in the parks, they can see and learn for these things themselves, and yeah. also identify both from Western knowledge in terms of silviculture and indigenous knowledge of the territory and how the forest works and its importance to um, a healthy region. And we'll be doing more of that this coming year. Yeah. You can go ahead. So for us now, this year, we're actually supposed to plant 7,500 trees in the region. And I'm on the way to uh, Mr. Wasis Nehiawa, which is a First Nation near here, but another 40 minutes away, uh, to plan, plan, plan and figure out, okay, where are we planting, what site prep is needed, and coordinate between regional partners to see which community is planting when. Um, it's been very challenging to work between multiple sites and partners, even for just a small amount of trees for these community level plants. Um, so trying to coordinate between all of them with a basically tree planting committee that we have established with all the groups, I think will be a big help in addressing those issues. Um, Another thing is I've bought an extra freezer and we'll be using my own freezer to store some of the uh, plugs so that if we do a September plant, they might be more viable if they're delivered frozen. Um, the last thing is just trying to have cheap but effective protection for some of the fruit trees that are planted because the deer love them and they will ravage any apple or fruit tree that we plant. Um, so it's, it's trying to be proactive in getting those up as soon as the trees are planted as well, just to prevent the deer from damaging them. Um, yeah, so I'm quite excited uh, in terms of where our project is going. And uh, we had a workshop in Waskasu, and unfortunately, I have a picture for it. And Waskasu is the Prince Albert National Park, just north of the city. And that was to try to go from seed to tree, both seed collection, saving, nurseries, et cetera, uh, to understand where are the gaps specifically in north central Saskatchewan, and how can we address those between partnerships within the region. Um, so that will really help move us forward and I think be the key aspects to our capacity building stream, such that if we are to pursue, say, the small scale urban plants or larger. I'd be happy to continue to share that with a group here. Thank you very much for paying attention. and. For having me. You can skip that. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Great. Thank you, Peter. Yeah. And I'll uh, pass it on to David. This is Trout Unlimited Canada. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, so I'm David Fields with Trout Unlimited Canada, and I manage our Restoring Riparian Refugee, Refuges uh, Tree Planting Program. Uh, so we are a national freshwater conservation organization, and we conduct our work through uh, science, education, and ecosystem restoration. Uh, we have offices in Calgary and Guelph, and we have local chapters that are currently active in British Columbia, Alberta, Ontario, Nova Scotia, and Prince Edward Island. 
Um, all of our chapters are involved in local freshwater issues, and we work together to implement uh, trade unlimited programming. So our restoring riparian refuges, or like we, we call it here, R3, um, it's funded through a contribution agreement with Two Billion Trees uh, in the capacity building funding stream. So I have been working on this program. I was brought on board here in September, and um, my focus has been primarily on uh, developing tools and, uh, and skill sharing opportunities for our chapters, as well as building partnerships. Now, our tree planting program is focused on riparian areas. I'm sure everyone here understands what a riparian area is. Um, uh, we're uh, focused on this area because it connects directly with our stream restoration work. Um, and of course, because of the importance of riparian areas in a changing climate. And um, let me see here. In our capacity building efforts, uh, so we're working with our local chapters uh, to build new partnerships and collaborations uh, and to bring on uh, more members uh, to, to implement the programming. Uh, we're providing knowledge and skill building resources. So that includes uh, guides on proper tree selection and siting, uh, planting techniques, and, uh, and we're placing an emphasis on monitoring sites after planting uh, for up to two years afterwards. Uh, we're also supplying equipment and um, so that we can expand the scale and frequency of our tree planting efforts uh, so that we can uh, plant upwards of 10,000 trees a year once we launch the program. So we've hired staff, including myself and a part-time technician uh, to train chapters uh, in implementing the program and to uh, work with new partners in regions where we don't currently have chapters, uh, but we do have engaged members that we can call on to participate. Uh, later on this month, on May 27th and 28th, uh, we're implementing our pilot project. Uh, so this is designed to provide a training opportunity for chapter members, uh, but it's also a networking opportunity. And uh, it's a chance to engage uh, the local community uh, and working with some new partners. And it's also intended to complete a multi-year dam removal and stream restoration campaign uh, and on Armstrong Creek in Markdale, Ontario. So at this pilot project, we plan on planting a, a thousand trees and enjoying some barbecue together. Now, regarding our experience with the proposal process, um, I, I would describe our relationship with the program as quite excellent. Um, it took about six months for us to receive a decision. Um, and we were accepted into the contribution agreement uh, stream instead of an outright grant, uh, because at the time that we had applied, uh, there was an overwhelming number of applications uh, there. And uh, we'll be submitting our uh, 2 billion trees application uh, this June um, to receive word by December so that we can officially launch our program in spring of 2024. And that's what I have for you now but I'm happy to receive any questions that you may have at the end. I'm also open to um, conversations about potential collaborations. Great, thank you, David. And uh, yeah, I'll pass it over to uh, Nigel. Hey everyone, I'm uh... I'm Nigel, I'm the forester with the Fundy Biosphere region. Um, and you can just go to the next slide. So we're a UNESCO designated biosphere region. We're operating out of Southeast New Brunswick around the Moncton area. Uh, we do have a bunch of different projects on the go, but the one I'll be talking to you about is our Forest of the Future project, the next one. So the goal of our project is to plant climate resilient trees. So we want to change our species compositions of our planting to handle climate change better, basically. And we are in the urban planting stream, but we still want to prep, establish, and monitor our planting sites, but we're trying to put them in larger blocks within urban areas. And we're also helping our vol volunteer groups who want to do small-scale planting but can't meet the quotas of 2 billion trees. So we're partnering with a couple of different groups in our area. And we're launching a program to give trees to residents like around the biosphere, as long as they agree to monitor, to monitor them. Yeah, just next slide, please. So 
Last year was the first year of our two billion trees agreement. In total, we planted 14 different species and about half of them will be able to prosper or persevere with our climate change. But it was just a balance of planting the right species to match the site conditions because we're not gonna plant pines in a swamp basically. The next slide. So for our two billion trees project, we're in the urban planting stream. Uh, we agreed to do 45,000 trees over three years. So last year we did 5,000 trees. This year we're doing 15,000 and the next will be 25,000. So we're kind of ramping up over the years. And we, we are committed to monitoring them and making sure that we do have like a good establishment rate. And we, our monitoring program is set up to monitor it very effectively so we can identify and resolve issues quickly because urban trees do struggle quite a bit. And next slide, please. So during our proposal project process, some of the challenges we have were just choosing the right stream because we, we could have applied for the rural stream, but we just don't have the capacity to meet the quotas that they, they demand basically. And we were, they were slow getting us our finalized contribution agreement. So we were originally supposed to plant 10,000 trees last year, but we cut that down to 5,000 just because we got started so late and we only had the fall planting season. But even, even through all that, the two billion trees staff are extremely helpful and knowledgeable. And if you reach out and ask them their questions, they're, all, they're always willing to answer them and help you out. The next slide, please. So some of like the general challenges for ours were seedling availability because we, we can get plugs fairly easily through like our local wood cooperative and stuff, but we wanted to plant a more diverse range of species. Luckily, one of the foresters that gives us our plugs actually grows hardwood seedlings as his hobby. So we're getting a lot of our hardwoods from him. And it is it has been difficult when we first started to just get more partnerships developed and finding new planting areas and reconnecting with new groups and stuff. And the species selection kind of goes with back with availability because we can't, we want to plant more climate resilient trees, but sometimes they're just not really available. And our final challenge was actually finding our tree planting staff because a lot in New Brunswick on tree planting doesn't pay very well generally. So we're trying to be competitive with larger companies, but also pay a lot more fairly and be on budget. And the next slide, please. And that, that's my presentation. If, you, if you're in the Biosphere region or if you're around the Moncton area and you'd like to come to one of our planting events, there's my email if you wanna send me an email or watch our social media for some of our events. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Nigel. And uh, I'll pass it over to Barb, who's our last speaker of the day. Uh, Barb, are you there? Okay, um, I'm hoping Barb probably shows up later during our meeting, but we can move ahead to our Q&A period. Um, so feel free to use the raise your hand function on Zoom if you if you have a question and uh, either David or I will, um, you know, uh, pick one of you guys and uh, let you guys speak. Or alternatively, you can post your question in the chat. And uh, if your question is for a specific speaker, uh, please uh, make that clear in your question. Yeah. Yep, yeah, uh, Rob. Hi, um, I have a question for Peter um, about the planting you're doing around the Rotary Trail. And <clears throat> I, I assume this is a city land or that you're planting on. And did you encounter any concerns from the city about uh, who looks after these forests long-term and who's responsible for any diet or um, you know, damage from weather events um, 
And if so, how did you resolve that? I think Peter left. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, I just read. Yeah, so uh, Peter did leave, but uh, Rob, so we, to everyone, yeah, we will be making everyone's um, contact information available in our follow up email. So yeah, just feel free to, you know, contact them directly. Okay. Uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, sorry about that, Rob. Uh, Amber? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I have a question for Nigel. That was a really interesting uh, presentation. So our organization, uh, Reforce London in London, Ontario, um, has been looking at sort of similar ideas, the question of how can we improve our species mix to be a bit more representative of what we are expecting climate-wise down the road. I'm curious how your organization has defined what will be climate appropriate, like what kind of climate scenario you're planning for, and how far south would you like seed from? I imagine we're probably too far south from you, but we've been doing some seed exchanges with communities a bit further north. Um, so it'd be interesting to know if we happen, I think we're probably too far south, but if we happen to be in your area, we'd have to, we'd have to share too. So yeah, thanks. So in 2012, we, we partnered with Mount Allison University to develop uh, a climate resilient species list, basically. So they use some, some climate modeling from Natural Resources Canada to predict what our species composition would look like in the future. So that's basically the cornerstone of our planting program. And we haven't quite experimented with moving from different seed sources yet, just because it's so hard to get trees right now. But we're looking at it in the future for sure. Thank you. There are there any other questions for any of our speakers or for David or I as well? Yep, Dean. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Rakshan. Um, uh, this question is is for uh, Randall at Tree Canada. Um, I think I understood that Tree Canada is is uh, acting as an aggregator uh, to uh, allow access uh, for smaller groups like ours um, who can't who are in planting in urban spaces. And ten thousand trees is a very huge hill to climb uh, on an annual basis. Um, and so um, I'm hoping you can speak a little bit to that. We, I don't think we heard anything about that today. Uh, yeah, possibly. Uh, that's the easy answer. <laughs> uh, it's not set. Through 2 billion trees, uh, it's more seedlings, right? So I, I think I mentioned a three hectare minimum. So that is possible. If you have a project in mind, for sure, reach out to me. But I did mention our urban program, which has really nothing to do with 2 billion trees, but there's several grants that are available for large stock trees under our urban forest program. So if you check out our website and look at community tree grants, there should be something there that might fit your, your project. Make sense? Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I guess I'll follow up with someone else at Tree Canada about, about urban planting, thanks. I can put the link in the chat. That'd be great, thanks. Yeah, well, we're not looking. Yeah, we're not looking for a community grant. We're looking to to be partnered up with other planters, uh, so we can share a two billion tree grant of ten thousand trees a year. Um, so, um, uh, if there's someone in your organization who is who's touching that, that would be great. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe just to respond to that, um, GCC Green Communities Canada is working on that um, specifically that that goal of uh, acting as an aggregator for urban tree planting projects, combining the community-based organizations to reach that uh, 10,000 tree minimum. Um, our focus is on mini forests as our core initiative. Um, and we're working on getting back to all the folks that uh, responded to our outreach survey in the last uh, month or so. So uh, if you, I think Free Forest London might have been one of the respondents to that. So you should get an email from me probably before the end of the week, actually, um, with all the information that we'll need from uh, prospective partners. Uh, can I interject? I don't have my hand up. Uh, <laughs> Dean, uh, this was a question that came up 
uh, when we met with all of the urban foresters around Manitoba in all, all the different municipalities was uh, the fact that they would have to team up to um, with other municipalities to reach the threshold, the two billion tree threshold. That's what you're concerned about, right? Yeah. Well, I, we're a little bit luckier in that we actually have an urban forestry department in our provincial government, which most of you don't have. But if you have any regional planning organizations, like Winnipeg has a regional, um, a regional organization here in Winnipeg that embraces, you know, ten other municipalities. If there's something like that in your area, it is possible to team up to meet the threshold. that helpful? Yeah, thanks. Okay. Yep. Thanks, thanks uh, Erna and Natalie. Uh, Megan. All right. I'm just <laughs> hitting all of the uh, reactions here by accident. Uh, one more reaction. All right. Um, so our organization, Oz, we've got a, a coalition program we're running right now, and we're, we're running it simply to support uh, the fact that not everybody has that 10,000 trade minimum. So we're working with a lot of different stakeholders across Alberta, uh, Manitoba, and partners like uh, Tree Canada as well to support planting on some of those maybe smaller scale projects where you don't meet that minimum number of trees. Um, give me a, drop me a message in the chat and I can connect you with some information on our, our approved coalition aggregator program. Thanks for that, Megan. Uh, does anyone else have any questions or comments for any of our speakers? Great. Um, yeah, I, I think we can wrap up the meeting uh, if uh, no one has any questions. So uh, thank you all for attending our meeting. Um, so we will be sending a follow-up email um, right after the meeting with the recording of the meeting, um, the contact info uh, for all the speakers. And uh, and um, yeah, so just to also remind you guys uh, that uh, we do have the sign-on letter prepared and we would like to release it to everyone either the next week or the following one to get all of your signatures and uh, yeah we would greatly appreciate your support um because yeah we we do want to convey all of your concerns and uh i guess like like worries about the program to and our cans that uh, they can i guess understand them and implement a better program and um our next coalition meeting uh or national coalition meeting will be on the 5th of july um and we'll focus on different teams so uh please feel free to email uh, email me if you have any suggestions for meeting teams or uh, any discussion topics uh, that you'd like to learn about or hear from about from you know uh, other organizations across the country um yeah with that being said feel free to email me if you have any uh questions or would like any support uh during the two billion tree proposal process um nature canada is here to help and um yeah uh, thank you all for attending and thank you to our guest speakers for their wonderful presentations and uh thanks yeah, for hosting great i hope you all have a great rest of the day and uh look forward to seeing you all soon